y'all, um, obviously, I would like to preface whatever I say about hires uh, with this. How could you possibly trust anything I have to say about the quality of the hire when I have celebrated the hiring of Pelini and I've celebrated the hiring of Pete's and Jones and whoever else? So, like, I'm, I'm not telling you uh, to, to believe me or anything. What I am telling you is that you know me. I'm an optimistic person. I'm a hiring nihilist. I think you never know if anybody's going to be good or bad. And so because of that, I choose to believe in the good, and I choose to focus on the good. And in this case, though, Jake, it becomes a bit interesting because there's not like a ton of selling points that are going to make you immediately like, oh, what a sexy hire. I'm not saying it's a bad hire, right? But, I mean, there's – um. I mean, you can go through the defensive rankings in a second. You're the one that kind of opened my eyes to this. No, I've got it right here. So he was the defensive coordinator in 2013 at Pitt. In total defense, they finished 71st in the country. In 2014 at Pitt as well, they finished 59th. The next year, 2015 at FIU, they finished 85th in the country. And you keep going down the line at Kentucky in 2017, 75th in the country in total defense. 2018 was by far the best year. They finished sixth in the country in total defense at Kentucky uh, under Matt House. So, one elite year. Mm -hmm. Every other year kind of middle of the pack. Now it's at Pitt and FIU and everything. So, I, I'm not going to – maybe if you really, like, dove it in the numbers, you could see in the context that that was good given how those teams were those years. I, I, I don't know. Uh, so, when I'm looking to build – my optimistic Matt House takes, right? If I want to make myself excited about this thing and believe in like I do most, I, I think the things that you have to start falling back in, and it feels kind of weird at the beginning of the relationship to be doing this, but it's almost a little bit of blind Brian Kelly trust because yeah. every DC that he's hired recently has been great. And the last three DCs that he has hired have now gone on to better jobs or head coaches of, of major teams, and so you figure, okay, if he got it right three times, he can get it right a fourth, uh, which I, I certainly hope is true. And, and then there's the Tyron Matthew tweet. So like, it, it really is. It really is just it's 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 the fact that Brian Kelly knows what he's doing hiring. He hired him, and then it's the fact that Tyron Matthew, who's played with House in Kansas City for the last couple of years, quoted uh, tweeted yesterday the LSU football announcement said, "I'm excited for Coach House and all of the Tiger Nation. This man loves football and teaching." One of the best I've been around. The Tiger defense will be well coached from day one. Let's all buy in for Ever LSU. Also, even like regardless of resume, there is no doubt that um, it's still way more of a resume than you had in Durante Jones, right? Who ended up doing a pretty good job, but like somebody who hadn't been a D coordinator in over a decade, and even then on like a Division II level, this man's been a DC on the NFL level. And I do love this. I love the last three years of the Chiefs. Like, sure, he's subservient yeah. to Spagnolo, but. Every single day in practice, he's having to go against Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes during camp, right? Like, like, like he understands the cutting edge of offensive philosophy. He understands how to combat it defensively, you would think at least. And so, uh, ironically, maybe even more than, 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 than his college defensive coordinator time, I'm actually a bit more excited about him spending the last three years in Kansas City where he's been a part of a staff that won a Super Bowl, played for a Super Bowl, and looks like they may play for a third. Yeah, and look, we, we could dive into maybe more uh, of the stats that we talked about at Pitt. Like, we're talking about scoring defense, but if we go to total defense, if we go to yards. Wait, like I thought that, we did total defense. Was that, it scoring defense? Sorry, scoring defense. Okay. If we go to total defense, maybe it changes a little bit. Um, I, I think they were in the 30s at Pitt when it started talking about total defense, and the scoring was uh, what I gave you there just to kind of clarify. So, yeah, I, I'm kind of with T-Ball. Like, we could dive into his time at Pitt you know, almost 10 years ago. And we can dive into what they did at Kentucky in that 2018 season. That was a special season for Kentucky. This is going to be one of those hires where you have to look, do a little bit of waiting. It's, it's a little bit of, of the waiting game. Now, to me, in this waiting game, you want to find out more, okay, what is your plan? What is the alignment you like to use? What are some of the coverages you like to use? Because Durante showed you last year that, you know, he was asked to probably run a 4-2-5. And whenever it said, hey, you can run whatever you want to run, they ran a 4-2-5. They ran um, a 3-3-5. Three, three, they ran multiple things. It wasn't just a 4-2-5. He had some three-man fronts. And so, for me, I want to know, okay, Matt House, what are you going to run? What is your vision for who you're going to be here at LSU? 
Yeah, and uh, that's that's the other part about this is that you're not going to go. You're not going to go for a long time. Total defense, 34th and 35th is what it looks like uh, as Pitt's defensive coordinator. What do you care about more, total defense or score defense? It's tough, right? Because it's easy. It's, it's like you can get all the yards you want, but if you don't score, yeah, exactly, so, right. So it's again, like, that's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, it's like score is all yeah. about. It. We could sit here and we could we could truly break down all those things, but I want to know because you, look, your resume, you, you've been in places, you've had the sixth defense in the country. But I, I want to know what your plan is for the current talent that you have on LSU's roster because you kind of have this mixed bag now of guys that have played in a 4-3 that finished the year playing more three-man fronts. They didn't abandon four-man fronts last year. It's kind of the misconception. You go back and you break down the film, they still ran some four-man fronts. They yeah. ran 4-2, they ran 4-3, they ran different things. What is your plan for who you have? Tell me who's going to be your edge guys. Tell me who's going to be, you know, inside of the defensive tackle position, what your plan for Jaquil and Roy is. Like, that's why I think this is more of a waiting game than, okay, let's go ahead and let's just react. Yeah, I think that uh, what would you say was the best uh, formation and personnel? By I like the, the 3 3 five. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's what I'm The 3 3 five to me when they had fits college football. Mike Jones, um, Damone Clark, and Micah Baskerville, and at linebacker. Well, actually, was it technically like a – or how would you I qualify? Because BJ Ojolari was out there as an outside linebacker. They, oh, they had, I mean, they ran multiple things. They had three, three, five, and where so, they would so put who BJ was in the front as a three. When they did the three, 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 five. I mean, all all that was interchangeable as well. I mean, you would have BJ part of that three man front, and you would have Jaquelin Roy, Neil Farrell, and, and different pieces in that three man front. That's what was so multiple about it is. You know, B.J. Ojolari didn't have to be at an outside linebacker. Like, he could be in a three-man front, and they would just put him out wide, and that was part of it as well. Hmm. Yeah, it does seem like, too, that's just kind of the way that football is uh, heading nowadays. But, again, nobody understands where football is heading better than somebody who is currently on a staff having to work against Eric Bieniemy and Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes and that offense uh, every single day. Like, you absorb a lot just through pure um, osmosis, I think, at, uh, at, the, at that point. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I don't think you call it uh, a home run hire by any means. Uh, but, again, you never know who is actually going to be a home run hire or not until you actually, you know, until you, it's a Schrodinger's coaching, until you open the box. And I'm, and I'm choosing to believe that the coach is alive and well and going to be great in that box until we open it up. Next year, because trust Brian Kelly and trust Tyron Matthew, like we all should. Um, Tyron's a man. It, I mean, it is kind of interesting that there was reports that they were interested in Kentucky's current defensive coordinator, and then they go to Kentucky's former defensive mm -hmm. coordinator. So there's Sound something. Like you. There's. I was about to say there's <laughs> something that that they listened to this show and they heard me talking about uh, Big Blue Nation here. Yeah. Oh, my headphones just died. I don't know what just happened. Um, all right. When we get back here on Off the Bench, uh, 